from the studios of Farm Journal Broadcast. This is U.S. Farm Report. Welcome to U.S. Farm Report this weekend. I'm Ty Morgan. Here's what's in store over the next 60 minutes. The La Nina effect. With all eyes on a possible El Nino this year, is it just weather causing more turbulence in the markets to kick off 2023? Record land sales across the U.S., but who's buying? I've been in this business over 25 years and never seen anything like it. A new report that shows just how hot the land market is to start off the new year. Chaos on Capitol Hill this week. A speaker has not been elected. But does it derail ag policy priorities in the new year? And in John's world. COVID and alcohol consumption. Now for the news. Farmers got a bit of a gift with Christmas at the end of the year last year with a big rally in the grains to end 2022. And the biggest moves came in the soybean complex on an Argentina weather rally tied to La Nina. But it seems the gears shift to start 2023. Soybean meal was the leader with gains of 20% for 2022. Soybean oil was up 13% while soybeans gained 14% or $1.85 for the year. The year-end rally in soybeans and soy products was pushed by strong demand for exports, but especially soybean processing with record high crush margins. Plus the recent heat and dryness in Argentina cut crop prospects for the number one soybean meal market in the world. Ag meteorologist John Baranek says La Nina has continued to linger for the third year in a row in Argentina. La Nina typically leads to drier and hotter conditions across Argentina and southern Brazil. It actually didn't materialize so much in southern Brazil this year, which was kind of interesting. Um, but that does, it's not over yet. So uh, we've had uh, some very dry conditions in Argentina. The process takes a couple of months. Um, models kind of say anywhere from January to March for that kind of uh, time frame to complete itself. Uh, and that will have some impacts going forward too. So the, the quicker it ends, the quicker we get into a, 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 a pattern where we're not driven by La Nina anymore. The Buenos Aires Grain Exchange rates only 10% of the soybean crop in Argentina as good to excellent, with corn only 15% good to excellent. Production estimates have been dropping in Argentina, with a notable agronomist recently lowering the soybean crop to 43 million metric tons. Well, here at home, we've been dealing with our own weather, including a powerful storm that hit California, bringing heavy rain, snow and flooding, along with that heavy mountain snow and high winds. The latest system coming just days after another storm walloped the state with dangerous flooding, forcing water rescues and evacuations. In Sacramento County, 40 people were rescued from their cars, according to the local fire official. Others were told to evacuate or shelter in place. The storm system causing significant flooding in urban areas and leaving creeks and rivers in Northern California overflowing. Now, last Saturday, 4.75 inches of rain fell in a 24 hour period in Oakland, the wettest day on record. Roads, those were especially hit hard and so hard that the National Weather Service said closures were too many to even count. When you see the water moving this quick and rising like this, it's a little unsettling. When I opened one of my gates, there was so much water, it was gushing and it knocked me over. More than 12 million people across the South were under flood watches earlier in the week, with the heaviest rainfall expected in parts of Southwest Alabama and Southeast Georgia. And ice and snow to the plains and upper Midwest. Check out these images from South Dakota, where Interstate 90 from Chamberlain to Sioux Falls had to be closed after roads became impassable from large snow drifts. The snow ban bringing up to 12 inches of snow from South Dakota to Nebraska and also farther east to Minnesota and Wisconsin. Well, it was one of the biggest stories of 2022, higher farmland values. And now we're getting new numbers in about just how big a year it really was. Farmers National Company releasing its 2023 land values report. It says in most cases, landowners selling property experienced values never before seen for their farmland. It says the final results at auction set records in several states and have increased year to year values between 20% to 34% across Corn Belt State. 
States. The company says it saw a new record sales volume of $766 million last year. That exceeds the previous record set in 2021. And it says the majority of sales came through auctions with increases in both total transactions and acres sold. And one company leader saying what we're seeing is true supply and demand scenario, that there are simply more buyers willing to bid on the limited amount of land coming to the market. Our data is still showing that nearly 80% of the buyers, the final buyers of land are still those local uh, owner operators that have been looking to add land to their uh, operation. Uh, but with that being said, the reason that there's so much competition in the market is that you have these either individual investors or investment groups who are uh, helping to drive that um, those bids up there. So even though that investor may not have been the buyer, they were part of the equation and caused that operator to, to bid it up. Well, despite Concerns about costs, the latest Purdue University CME Group Ag Economy Barometer coming in at a reading of 126 in December. That's 24 points higher than just a month earlier. And researchers say although farmers were more positive regarding both the current as well as their expectations for the future, by far the biggest improvement was on their assessment of current conditions. Researchers say the change in perception among producers regarding their farm's financial situation could be attributed to producers taking time to estimate their farm's 2022 income following the completion of the fall harvest. Well, weather making more headlines this week and we'll get a check of your forecast next.